And then here is an exchange that happened after the incident began to settle down in terms of the high emotions at play. And um, the, the victim here is standing by a car, and, they're, and the officers are now trying to explain what happened. This exchange makes me wonder why he's only suing for one million. Take a look. I understand you want to get to a well lit area. A, le a well lit area. I get that. But when we follow you that long, look at look at the climate this day, and, and against everybody, against us, against y'all, against everybody. Really? I mean, Cedric really? Alexander. Really? The climate's um, bad for them. You know, uh, throughout my adult life, I've always tried to give benefit of the doubt to police officers. You will, and I've said it on the show, yeah. you will never hear me on this show when police officers, whether they are black, Hispanic, white, Asian American, if they're kicking down doors, if they're in a dangerous situation and they make a split second mistake, well, uh, we don't know what it's like unless we're in that position. But in this case, like the George Floyd case, they knew what was going on. Mm. They had minute after minute after minute to correct their wrongs, and they just refused to do it. They continued to humiliate a lieutenant, a <laughs> lieutenant who was serving their country. When they not only had the responsibility, but you would assume had the training to draw back and calm down and understand they had made a terrible mistake. But it just went from bad to worse. And they had to humiliate the black man, get him on the ground, shove the lieutenant on the ground until he started weeping. It is disgusting. And, and I, I just want to know, you've been studying this for a long time. Why do we keep seeing videos like this even a year after George Floyd's death. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thank you for having me this morning. But let me say, uh, Joe, I had a number of people call me here last night and very early this morning here in Pensacola just to discuss uh, what they had witnessed through this video. I'm a 40 year police veteran. I'm retired. I'm back home. I spent a lot of time now talking about reform and reimagining policing and doing my part to try to do what we can do to help change this. But this video that we, that we're looking at, it is painfully, uh, egregious. And for him to have gone through what he experienced, not just the fact that he's a soldier, which is really important, but the fact that he's a human being. But let me start by saying Amen. this about that traffic stop. They called this in as a felony stop. That was not a felony stop because you cannot see someone tag displayed. So he called it in as a felony stop. And as you noticed in your reporting, he even lied about the type of stop that it was, what had occurred. And then we see this ongoing humiliation, this ongoing uh, 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 just horrible treatment of an individual, right. a human being who happens to be a military soldier. And we see it in this time that this country is in where we're trying to fix the things that have been wrong since the inception of policing. So this is not a new issue. It's just that we're able to catch it now on video, and we're seeing it over and over and over again. American policing in this country is broken. It's going to have to be fixed. We cannot continue to move forward the way that we're doing now and expect somehow miraculously overnight something is going to change. It's going to take a lot of legislation at the federal, state, and local levels in order to change these behaviors. Because even if you look at that traffic stop, tactically, tactically, if that was a felony stop, it was totally inaccurate, wrong. Was that trained that way? But it was not a felony stop to begin with. And in addition to all that, to humiliation, calling him out the way that they did, you're going to ride the lightning? No, Officer Guterres, you should have been fired the night that this occurred. And he should never be in policing again. And quite frankly, those who hired him in that city, from his elected officials down to his police chief, need to be held responsible. And not just monetarily, but held responsible politically.
for having that type of personality and individual as part of their police ranks. It's not all about training. It's who we're hiring. And we're not hiring right. the right people for these jobs. Amen. And is it right. is. And I just I just got to say here over the past year, uh, it's not just Cedric saying that and Eddie saying that and the Rev saying that they will all confirm. They hear that. I hear that from police officers all the time who look at these videos and go, my God, what the hell is happening in the ranks there? Why isn't there better discipline? Uh, and, and, and Rev, uh, something that I know you hear all the time, something that Mika and I were saying when we were watching uh, this un unfold on video was, my God, how many times does this, does this happen when the body cams aren't on? How many times did this happen before we started having body ga cams, before we started How could body having, cams have ever been a debate? Having, having cameras on our phones. We're only seeing this now, obviously, because of the technology of the past 10, 15 years. And it shows you and I have been talking about body cams nonstop. Every police officer in America has to have it. They have to be turned on if an incident like this happens and they don't have it on. Then the, they, the burden of proof is on them. But, Rev, how many times does this happen when the body cams aren't on? And, and that is a real, real fear that we live with every day in our communities. And let me tell you, if it was not for the uh, 21st Century Task Force that President Obama had, there would not be as much body cameras available as there are. I believe Cedric was on that task force. We had to fight for that, and I hope this administration and this Congress will legislate. We've done the demonstration. We need the legislation. This will not stop until bad police, and most police are not bad, but bad police know they will be held accountable until they know qualified immunity is not going to shelter them, until they know there is a penalty for this. We are faced this morning with this tape with a 20-year-old young man unarmed that is dead, whose family is going to be reaching out to someone. That's where people like me and National Action Network step in. How do we explain this over and over again without changing the laws? The good news is you are right. Many police are now beginning to speak up. For the first time, we saw police officers take the stand in Minneapolis and testify against Chauvin which I've not seen in the years that I've been out here fighting against police misconduct. I've never seen the blue wall pierced as it has in Minneapolis. But even as that happened, a policeman still can take his gun and shoot and kill right in the same county that this trial is going on. We need to deal with, if there is no legislation, there will not be a change in behavior in bad cops. Bad cops are not going to be converted they have to therefore be convicted in the court of law if they do what is wrong. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.